Hey guys, it's been a while since I did one of these videos. You know, where instead of playing a game and talking, I'm just, well, talking. I was prompted to do this video when I recently noticed that YouTube had deleted one of my videos. Um, yeah, but let's start from the beginning. This video is a response, a response to YouTube. Or to be more accurate, it is a response to an action that YouTube took against my channel recently, which is um, only natural since YouTube never communicates through words but only through actions. So I received a community strike for violating their community guidelines. More specifically, for violating the content policy regarding nudity and sexual content. The video in question was the very last video I created for my Sin Let's Play a video entitled Let's Play Sin, super bonus video, even more boobs, not safe for work, so NSFW. So this wasn't just any video, it was my most popular video by far, having been viewed by almost 30,000 people so far, and it would probably have reached this number in a few months had YouTube not taken it down. Now even if you haven't seen the video, judging from its title alone, you probably think it wasn't at all surprising that YouTube took issue with this video. And if you have seen the video, you would know that it contains an easter egg showing Alexis Sinclair naked, completely naked effect, complete with nipples and pubic hair, masturbating in a bathtub, and you would probably be even less surprised about that community strike. And I agree. Well, sort of. Let me explain. I published this video the video being deleted, on January 22 in 2015, which was a few months after the end of my Sin Let's Play. And this video was meant as an update to an earlier bonus video that I had recorded, uh, which showed basically the same easter egg, but in its more well-known form, the less explicit form, where Alexa still wears a bikini, um, although it's a very small one and, well, Anyway, in this updated version of my video, um, I explained how the original version of Sin contained a hidden folder with nude skin for Alexis Sinclair that could be installed with the Sin developer tools. Whereby original version I mean not the version that was re-released on Steam, which was, which was in fact heavily censored and if you want to see how much it was censored you should watch my video entitled Year Response Number 4 the mystery of Jessica Cannon. So when I made this video, I was of course fully aware of its sexual nature. That was in fact the reason why I put NSFW in its title. And nobody who clicked on this video, again, a video entitled Let's Play Sin, super bonus video, even more boobs, not safe for work, should have been negatively surprised by what they got to see. A low poly Alexis Sinclair masturbating in a bathtub. Would the video have been flagged as mature content or even would have been removed back then, I probably would not have been as upset. But that it happened now more than three years after I published it, after it has been viewed by tens of thousands of people, none of them taking any issue with this previously, and I know that because the video hadn't even been flagged as mature prior to its removal, that did upset me. Quite a lot in fact. Now I can already guess what most of you will probably think at this point. Probably something like, stop whining. You uploaded a video containing nudity to YouTube in obvious violation of their policies and you were simply lucky that you got away with it for so long. I mean it's hard to argue with that sentiment, even though I would respond that even though it's clearly sexual content, it is only virtual one and does not constitute pornography and that flagging it as mature content would probably have been a sufficient measure. But the fact that I, quote unquote, got away with it for so long is precisely the reason why this upsets me so much. So wherever you are, you are always making assumptions about your environment. When you first enter a new environment, you will have very few knowledge about it and therefore you will make very few assumptions and correspondingly you will be very careful when you move around in this environment. 
and you will generally not feel very comfortable there. But the more you inhabit this environment, the more you figure out its rules, assuming of course that it is governed by rules and is not completely chaotic, the more comfortable you will feel in it until you eventually feel at home and safe there. But when in such an environment that you thought that you'd figured out, an environment that you'd felt safe in, something negative and unexpected happens, it will be devastating. Not because something bad happened, it doesn't even have to be such a grave event, but because something bad happened and you had no idea that it was coming. And worse, you thought that such a thing could not have come. Or, to borrow the terminology of former Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld, you thought that you knew that there are no unknown unknowns, but had to learn that your knowledge of that was false. And if these assumptions about your environment are false, what else might be false too? If a belief that you knew to be true turns out not to be, what truths can you still trust in? When something like this happens, the, now to borrow a terminology of psychologist Jordan B. Peterson, the dragon of chaos has entered into your life and generally this is a very, very unpleasant sensation. To make this more relatable, consider the following thought experiment. You are renting an apartment from someone and as part of the rental deal, you have access to a shed. Now, your landlord never explicitly tells you that it's okay to store things in there, but you have noticed that other tenants use it as a storage room and you do have access to it, and so you decide to store your bicycle there. Maybe you worry a bit about it in the beginning, but eventually it just becomes normality. Then, one day, your bicycle is gone. You ask your landlord about it and he tells you that he threw it away, because tenants are not supposed to store things in there. And yes, this does in fact happen in real life. So the reason why this incident upsets me, upsets me enough to make a scripted video about it, is this. YouTube is not the same environment as it used to be. When I started my channel all the way back in 2013, YouTube was sort of a refuge for me. It was a difficult time for me and somehow the lack of energy I felt in my normal everyday life made me see comfort in creating a new virtual one here on YouTube by starting a Let's Play channel. And if you watch my very first video entitled Let's Play Kingpin number one, don't mess with rats, you can clearly hear how intimidated I was in the beginning. It was terrifying. But I persevered and eventually got better and more confident in what I was doing and it became a hobby for me that I enjoyed, I really enjoyed. At the same time it allowed me to indulge in playing video games but more importantly it was a safe environment for me to exercise speaking in public and to get better at pronunciation and fluency in verbal expression in general. And that is exactly what YouTube started out as. A place where you can express yourself freely and upload whatever weird shit that you think the world needs to see. But over the years, YouTube has changed. Or rather, was changed, was pushed into a certain direction different from its natural course as determined by its creators. The creators being the creators of videos, not the creators of YouTube. So you will probably have heard the terms apocalypse or demonetization being thrown around a lot in relation to YouTube recently. Without going into details here, let us just say that these words are associated with a series of actions taken by YouTube that all have made it more difficult, less profitable and less effective for independent creators, so i.e. for you to express themselves here on YouTube. Whether videos are flagged by bots for being non-advertiser friendly or are flagged by a so-called hero, or whether the publication of new videos is simply withheld from your subscribers, or YouTube simply randomly unsubscribes people on its own, it all boils down to this. Less of you and more of Jimmy Kimmel. It seems that YouTube is intent on removing the you from YouTube thus becoming only tube, or in other words, television. The very thing that people were so sick to the teeth with, that many people of the millennial generation have completely abandoned it in favor of YouTube. Now if this is true, if there really is a purpose connecting all these events, if the community strike I suffered is part of a plan of YouTube to cleanse itself, 
from small creators like me or even big creators like PewDiePie and H3H3 to throttle their voices down to irrelevance, then YouTube's boots will continue to walk all over us as they use their selectively enforced policies to create the YouTube that they want, that the advertisers and the entertainment industry wants, a YouTube that is predictable for them but not you, a YouTube without wildcards like PewDiePie. And if that's the case, well, then maybe it's just time to leave. Of course, then the question becomes, leave where to? Now, there are YouTube competitors, believe it or not, quite a few actually, like Vimeo, Dailymotion or Yuku. But I feel this won't solve the deeper problem. A problem that I tried to formulate in an earlier video, which is called the feudalization of the internet getting screwed by Lord Google, which in fact also was a response to something that YouTube did to me. This problem that I tried to specify in this video can basically be summarized in one word. Platforms. I think that moving from YouTube to another platform like the ones mentioned will at best be a temporary solution. Viable only so long as the platform owner thinks that allowing free speech or free expression gives them a competitive advantage or they aren't forced by governance to intervene and restrict free speech. I think it's not just time to leave YouTube, I think it's time to leave platforms altogether. I think it's time to give up the comfort and go back to basics, to go back to the primitive era of the web 1.0, where the only way to have your voice heard was to host your content that you deemed interesting yourself. Over the coming months, I will give this a thought and try to work out something, but in the meantime be assured that I will finish all of the current Let's Plays and maybe even try to get a censored safe for work version of my super bonus video back up on the channel so at least the informational value contained in that video is not lost. Note also that I appealed the strike, um, but I don't have much hope that this appeal will be successful. Anyway, um, thanks for listening and until next time folks, until then.